Hello friends, welcome to Joy of Life. So today we are going to understand another important concept of data structure that is hashing, hash collision and chaining, right? So why do we need hashing? So to understand in details, let's break down what are we trying to solve and how we can solve this, right? So the basic intention over here is how you are going to store the elements and how fast you can retrieve the element from them. What is the trade-off that we are going to do in order to find the element, right? And there could be several ways we can store things, right? So to start with, we'll take some of the example where we store data like a link list. So our link list looks something like this, right? What happens is when we get a new node, we put it at the back of it. So if I want to search a particular element over here, what I will do is I'll start iterating over the list and what we'll end up having is we'll have a order of n, right? In order to find it, right? So if we have the link list sorted also, it's not going to give us any benefit because we cannot do a binary search on a link list, just like an array. So having said that, we said we can do it in an array. So what if we use an array instead of a linked list in order to store elements? Let's sort the array. We'll have a better performance. Now that the array is sorted, what we can say is that we can do the searching in order of login, right? We can do a binary search. We have improved from order of n to order of login. Amazing. Problems? There are problems because we don't know how many elements we'll have, right? So what you do, do is in Java, you create a set, you do something like this, right? And we don't know how many elements we are going to store. So what happens to the underlying array when it starts growing? It will be a problem. When the array reach, reaches its capacity or the load factor, we need to allocate more space. It, it is a contiguous space, right? So we have to expand. So we have to create the array and we have to get things sorted out properly, right? Problem. So array, array cannot be used when your data set or then or the data that is going to come we are not sure about it right what if i remove three from this set so every element need to move one index right i remove one so you will again end up doing order of n work removing all these elements back and forth right you will have problem we are going to face problems right with that array. so array is again not a very good choice so we have seen that how linked list and array Though link list can do it, but uh, let's see how we can improve it. But for array, it is kind of difficult, right? Again, array can do it, but um, the performance is pretty questionable, right? Because with the growing needs for adding new elements, how we can even do it better in the average case, at least. In average case also, what we see is that it tend to go towards a log n or uh, order of n. And log n, when we see uh, say log n, then removal and all will cause you a problem, right? You have to do a login searching and then you are going to remove it. And then if you're removing the first element, then you have to move every element down the line, right? So there are problems with uh, these, right? So the next option that we have is uh, probably a tree. Let's see how tree can help us over here. So once again, let's say we have the same inputs, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I create a tree out of this. We'll end up having something like this. And what if we start searching in this for six, then we have to again go through all the nodes in order to identify. So we have to go a tree traversal, which will cost me order of n, right? Now let's improve this with the binary search tree. So we get a one, we put the one as the root, and then we get a two, which is a higher than one. So we have to put the two on the right. And then we get a three, we put it to two's right. We get a four, we put it to three's right. What can happen is your three can get skewed up, right? So that, that there, is, there is a problem with the binary search tree. So what we need in a binary search tree that we continuously rebalance the tree. Now rebalancing comes with a cost, right? So what will happen is when you have a one and a two, then the moment you put the three, the node over here is need to be balanced right so what will happen when two will become the root and one will come over here and three will come over here so once again when you put the four over here it's fine but when you put the five over here it needs a rebalancing again so this three three is getting skewed up right so what we have to do we have to rebalance from uh, this element right so the tree also comes with a cost wherein we have a rebalancing over here so the rebalancing will cost you some extra time and what you do in a binary search tree is you decide and you have a login behavior over here right 
So we have three, uh, seen three of this approach over here, link list, array, and retrieve. Now let's understand what happens when we do a hashing. So let's say I have created a hash set over here. Let's say this is an array which is having 10 placeholders, right? So these are my 10 elements of the array in a continuous memory. And I have a class wherein I have to use that class in order to store those objects. So I have a class as well over here. So let's say this is my class over here. So my class has few variables over here like name, section, standard, role, etc. And what I am going to do is I am going to create a few objects of this class type. And let's say I have uh, the student class object. So I have A, B, C, D, E, F and let's say I have up to 30 objects over here. But do remember I have just only 10 placeholders over here. So the size of my or the count of my hash bucket is 10 that is 0 through 9. So let me put the indexes over here. Now how does a hashing works, right? So we need a hash function. So in Java, if we see that we have something like a hash code, but let's keep it generic and let's say we have a hash function. So what does a hash function do? It uh, takes an object as an input and it calculates or computes the hash based on that, right? So we have four of the instance window variables. So it will calculate the hash and it will generate some hash code for the same or the hash value for the same. So let's say we have a hash function. So let's say this is our hash function. Okay. So what we are going to do is we are going to put this inputs over here. So let's um, identify them by their name. So let's say I put Joe to this hash function. I mean to say the object of Joe, right? And what hash function produce is the hash value for the same, which is a numeric value. So let's say the value is a big number like this right and what am i going to do with this i don't have an index that big that i'll go there and store it i know i have a fixed size of my bucket so what am i going to do with this number so i know the size so whatever hash code that hash value that i'm going to get i'm going to do a mod with the size of my hash or size of my bucket you can say and whatever value that I get over here this x is nothing but the index so over here if you see we have a size of 10 so if you see whatever number I mod with this size of 10 I will never get a value greater than 9 right so this doing a mod over here with 10 will always give me value between 0 to 9 right so the value that we'll get over here is a 2 so I can say that I will go over here and store Joe in this index, right? So next time when you try to search for Joe, what I'll do is I will pass the object into the same hash function. And what I'll end up getting is 8765143432, this number itself, right? Right. So we know that hash produces the same hash value for the same object every time. It's going to be consistent. It's never going to change. And so is the size of my bucket, which is 10 over here, right? So it's not going to change. So when you give me Joe again, I get the same value. I have the same size. My size will never change. I will do a mod and I will again get a 2. So I can jump to the index 2 and get Joe, right? So this operation over here has been completed in order of 1, right? Both for insertion and for retrieval. We got the value in order of 1. Now coming to the next, let's see a couple more examples over here. So you pass me mic this time and let's say I got a hash something like this for this mic and we do a mod 10 and we get 5. So what we are going to do at index 5 we are going to store up mic and similarly when you pass me Paul I get a number like this I do the mod I get a 3 and I store Paul over here. And again, we know that the retrieval is going to be pretty simple. The same way what we are doing, we'll go ahead and see. And uh, suppose now you wanted to search for a Steve, right? And when I do for Steve, I get an index which is an 8. And I see that there is an 8, there is nothing. So I say that Steve, I don't have. So far, things look very good and interesting as well, right? So now you might have observed that I have 10 buckets and I have 30 objects. So there will be time when we have the same bucket id for the same for a different object right and that is the time when we say that we have encountered a hash collision right the chance of this hash colliding is very less since the range is huge 
but for us the range is very small it's between 0 to 9 right for storing 30 objects i cannot create a array of size billion right that it's it's not fair right we are wasting like 99.79% of the space right so let's say let's understand the collision part now that we have understood the other part so what happens is i get a input for steve and the hash that i get is 5187326 so the hash has not collided but what collided over here is basically when i do a mod with 10 i get a 2 and now when i go to the index 2 oh my god there is somebody sitting there now what should i do should i throw up joe and put steve there so when the user try to find joe i should i tell him that he's not there that's unfair right that's like lying to him right so we have to handle this collision and how we are going to handle is basically the way is known as chaining right so what we have been doing all this while is storing the object in the array so let's think that let's not store the object instead what we can do is we can go to a linked list approach from here or a list approach so let's say instead of storing the element over here what i store now is the head of a linked list right so each of these cells over here now stored the head pointer so two stores the head pointer for all the nodes whose hash code mod size gave a value of two three stores the head for the linked list for all those element whose hash mod size gave a value of three and similarly for five so when we had a problem with steve and steve now can resolve its problem right so what steve will basically do or rather the object steve what it will do is it has a hash code of two so it will go and put itself to the next of joe right so if you are from java background you might have noticed that we have two things over here in our object class the method hash code so this is a little specific to java we have two method called hash code and equals right and there is a contract that says that even if two hash codes are same it's not necessary that the objects are equal right and but if two objects are equal their hash code has to be same right so if I give Joe again and again, it has to produce the same hash code, right? That's why we have that uh, rule, right? Otherwise we cannot retrieve things. So now when you wanted to search for Steve, what has happened is it produced the same hash code, right? So this hash code will tell me which bucket should I go and start searching for. So it told me that you go to the bucket number two over here, right? So I come and get ahead of a linked list and what I'm looking for is a Steve. So the first element that I get, I do a equals with Steve and it says that no, I am not Steve. And then I go to Steve and do a equals and what I get, yes, I am Steve. So I can tell that the yeah, Steve exists over here, right? This is how a hashing is done. This is how a hash collision is identified and resolved using the chaining method. So this is nothing called chaining, right? So the beauty of this thing is that in the worst case this will still have an order of n right but having a good hash code implementation which equally divides the object into this number of buckets right so in our case we have taken a very small size for our bucket which is 10 right in real life it's going to be far bigger than this right so we'll have more number of buckets and if your hash code distribution is even so your total object is going to get distributed equally over all the buckets so let's say you have n buckets so it's going to get distributed evenly over this n buckets right and so whenever there is a collision we'll still do a searching over the list but the list size of the list will be substantially smaller than what we have seen in a normal linked list right so two things over here number of buckets that we have should is an important parameter which determines like how efficient the searching will be and the second important thing is the hash function that we are going to use in case of a uh, java implementation it depends upon your hash code implementation how evenly your hash code is being generated right it's going to uniformly distribute the data over the array right so what will happen is the worst case order of n is least likely to happen or you can say that order of n will never happen to you because we'll never have one bucket and we are never going to store in only one bucket it can only happen when you write a bad hash code implementation 
or you use a bad hash function right otherwise that's never going to happen so overall it's going to be very very fast and efficient when you when it comes to searching and this is the mechanism that is followed for your hashing hash collision and your uh, chaining so i hope you got the concept over here this is something a very interesting concept wherein again we are using multiple data structure in order to solve so if you think about the complexity again identifying my bucket is order of one operation because i am just doing a mod operation and nothing else right so that's the order of one and inserting also if you are maintaining a head and a tail pointer right your insertion entire insertion process can happen at order of one if we are just putting at the tail of it right and you're searching again identifying the bucket will be a order of one over here and then you have to go over this list so in worst case it can go up to order of n but which is very unlikely that you will have an order of n complexity for searching the element right so overall it's pretty much efficient and outperforms any of your previously discussed uh, data structure like linked list array or a tree right so yeah that is all from this video i hope uh, you understood the concept in case if you have any doubt please feel free to drop a note in the comment section below and if you have any doubts to ask and uh, please share it with your friends please subscribe if you haven't done so please support the channel in order to grow um, it's, it's tedious after uh, days of office work to create a video and then to edit it and then to post it and uh, the only motivation that i have is that you guys are getting the help i'm far away from monetization so that's not my lookout or concern at the moment if i'm able to help a few guys out there who's really willing to learn that's the only motivation that i'm looking for at this moment so do support and share with your friends let the channel grow so yeah that's all from this video so once again stay at home take care of yourself don't go out the wave is far from over i believe we still have lacks of cases and um, so do stay, stay safe and uh, take care of your family members and uh, see you soon again bye, -bye.